play that out. Let's say it is truly fantastic and Superman legacy is disappointing. Mm -hmm. Now what? Yeah. How is the fantastic Superman, the Elseworlds Superman? See, like it's very yeah. hard to touch a scenario where this is a win-win. What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, <clears throat> I thought that this was going into the waste bin of what they seemingly did with Batgirl. Although they didn't get too far. It seems as if we are still possibly getting, Brian, I'm not sure if this is a confirmation, but I've heard this is on, still on the table for an Elseworld, Elseworld story. And I'm referring to J.J. Abrams and Tanahashi Coates. Different take <laughs> on Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Well, well, hang on. Before you say that, okay. the moniker you were going to use, <laughs> Idris Elba already called himself that in Hobbs and Shaw. Yes. <laughs> so we already have, quote unquote, Black Superman. Yeah. Idris Elba, Hobbs yeah. and Shaw. Yeah. I mean, Brian, what, what do you think uh, of this possibility and will what kind of effect do you think it will have on the overall IP? So James Gunn on social media confirmed the project is, quote, in the, still in development. No details. Still in development as an Elseworlds project. I continue to not buy any of this rhetoric. I, I, I don't believe that it's on the level. Um, I, I, I think that in development is a long way from greenlit and getting made. We have heard nothing about a script being, we have heard nothing from Ta-Nehisi Coates about a script being, a story being written, uh, rumors of what would be, I think the last thing we heard about it was it might be a period piece. That was like three years ago uh, in the, under the prior regime. We heard nothing about, you know, I mean, you wouldn't hear casting rumors. There's been no hirings of a director. I mean, Abrams is not going to do it himself. So I think this is more in develop, what they call development hell, which is it just stays there for a long time. They don't officially publicly kill it because they don't want Batgirl-esque blowback. But there's no real true momentum for this to ever truly see the light of day. I, I just, I will believe that when I see like, hey, we're, we've got a cast and a crew and we're going in front of the camera and, and on, on X date. Do you think James Gunn is not willing to um, ax it because of the relationship? I don't think it's 100% his call. I Who's think called? that it's Dazov's call. I, th I, think, I think they took, I, I think he looks at it as, look, the, it's the PR side of it. They took heat for what they did to Batgirl for some of the other programs that they scrubbed off of HBO Max and off their calendar. There was a view and there, you know, there was some data to support that, that the stuff they were removing basically was stuff that lean in, in the direction of representation. And I think as a result, you've got a high profile director and a high profile writer, and they don't want to come out and publicly say, we're just formally getting rid of the project. So I, I don't mm -hmm. know that James Gunn's fully free in this sense to make the decision in either direction. That's my theory, at least. Even if there is an agreement behind the scenes that this is not going to happen. I just yeah. don't think we would hear that. It would just sort yeah. of disappear into the ether and never get made. What if they got, what if, uh, so, okay, what is the likelihood of this happening, of this movie happening? I think it's 10% or less. Yeah. And what would be the reasons for it not going forward, Brian? And like, for me, Brian, if, if this were to move forward, then You'll have a lot of conversations, Brian, starting back up and it won't be, uh, it'll be a lot of tension because of it and it's unnecessary when you have other characters that can be portrayed like Icon is, Icon, Republican, and he's like, 
Why aren't we doing that? That's a story I'd like to see. But instead, they want to use this as a vehicle to tell a story to get eyes. I mean, I get the the, the I I mean, I get the intrigue, Brian, for telling a story like that. But it just doesn't. I I don't know. I just think it ruffles too many feathers and and is unnecessary in my in my opinion. So, at the risk of inciting a little controversy, I think if this project moves forward and ever is completed, I think it will damage itself and it will damage whatever Superman legacy turns out to be. So here's my case. When this project was first conceived, it was going to be the Superman. If you recall, this was put forth as the successor to the Henry Cavill Superman. That when, when they first assembled this, it was going to be the one and only DC new Superman. I think taking it from the standpoint of all the people out there who could say, wow, I never thought I would be able to see a person of color wearing the S and that would be a heroic moment. I think you immediately do a disservice to that argument when you say, well, this is just Elseworlds. This is already not our real Superman. It's something else off to the side. I think that would draw negative attention because yeah. people would say, wait, you used to think it was good enough to be the Superman. Now you only think it's good enough to be the other Superman. I think it would hurt that project out of the gate to be labeled as such. Yeah. Conversely, I think it would actually hurt Superman Legacy or let's say Superman Legacy sequel or wherever we're at in that story. Here's why I think that. And it's hard to say this, but I think the numbers, I'm going to go off the numbers. There is clearly a camp in the movie going community that makes decisions about where to go to the theater based upon these, these types of issues. Look at the Disney movies where this has become a lightning rod. Lightyear, Strange World, Little Mermaid. Every one of these projects has become a box office disappointment. Every single one. Mm -hmm. And one of the arguments you hear is there's certain demographics who don't like the degree of messaging that is appearing in the movies, which is why Bob Iger said what he said in the fall. I think if they, it's not the same. I realize they're going to have multiple Batman, but I, it's not the same. Yeah. I think if they're going to try to launch a Caucasian Superman and a Superman of color at the same time, I think you will make no one truly happy. As I said, I think the the Superman of color, it will feel like a secondary marginalized Superman and the P word will come out. And I think on the other side, people will say, well, wait a minute. I, I, I no longer feel as behind that Superman because you did the other Superman. I hate to say that, but I, mm -hmm. you're seeing it at the box office, people making those decisions. So mm -hmm. that's my argument. If they do it, I actually think it might backfire on both sides of the table rather than be additive to the universe are you even if you, it's good even if it's good yeah yes do you think there could be a pivot towards doing a, 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 a superman of color that is not clark kent like valzado or, or, or some other character uh well, that's so, yeah. I mean, that's like the Miles Morales argument for Spider-Man, right? It's like it's the same alter ego, but the mm -hmm. the out of costume character is not the same. I never say never. Like, I, I guess I've always left my mind open to the possibility. I guess to me, though, Pablo, I'm just looking at the climate yeah. and saying we got the CEO of Disney saying we got to get back to entertainment over messaging. We've got people who are clearly going onto social media as watchdogs for what they perceive to be too much in that direction. The Marvel's another example that I forgot. And like the common thread is box office disappointment for all the projects that are perceived, rightly or wrongly, perceived to be in that camp. And I just don't see how this project would not be perceived to be that way. Let's say this movie was fantastic, Brian. It, that wouldn't be the conversation. No, that'll be that's some the of the problem. conversation. That's that'll the be problem. some of the conversation. Play that out. Let's say it is truly fantastic and Superman Legacy 
is disappointing. Mm-hmm. Now what? Yeah. How is the fantastic Superman the Elseworld Superman? See, like it's very yeah. hard to conduct a scenario where this is a win-win. And at the I'm end just, of the day, it's dollars, man. I hate to tell you people, yeah. it's dollars. The studio makes percentage plays based upon dollars. If I was James Gunn, I would have a conversation with JJ and be like, yo, you ain't messing this up for me. Because that's what this would do. Mess it up for the potential of telling a lot more stories than just Superman Legacy. Because if Superman Legacy fails, then that's it. It's over. It's a wrap. So here's one. I couldn't decide whether this would be taken as too, I don't want to say insulting, but viewed as too much of a backseat, which would be, what if they did it as an animated project? Would people see that as like you're just downshifting it too much and you're not, you just don't, you're already saying you don't have the confidence in this to make it live action and that's too insulting to get off the ground? I just, Brian, this is something, and I think a lot, this is something I've never even thought of. You know what I'm saying? The mere thought of that possibility doesn't even cross my mind. But for someone to want to tr- attempt to do something like that, my question, I would love to hear the why. I would love to hear the why. Anything else, Brian, before we move on? No, I just, like I said, I, I do think there is a little bit of PR BS in all of this right now. I just, I every vague update we get is just that, vague, in development. It, yeah. it doesn't suggest forward momentum. And I feel yeah. like, you know, you've got with people that profile of J.J. Abrams and Ta-Nehisi Coates, if there was real work being done, don't you think either one of them would have kind of said something to the effect of like, hey, you know, like writers are always saying like, hey, I'm, I'm this far through the draft. I'm excited about what I'm working on. You always get those tidbits from, from writers. Like, we haven't gotten anything yeah. in three years. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this, this uh possibility that this is still in development and they may go forward with this what do you think may happen if this were to be produced and be done and and be shown uh alongside what james gunn is trying to do how do you think will it'll affect what he's trying to do uh i mean is it elsewhere yeah but even that, it, I don't see Brian. Elseworld is a, is a is a very interesting conversation to have because Brian, we only have Elseworld because of what has transpired prior to James Gunn and the success those movies have had prior to him. That's why WB is like we gotta keep doing those. Okay, we'll just call those Elseworlds. Hmm. But going forward, Brian, after James Gunn releases Superman Legacy. What would be the purpose of telling Elseworld stories unless you're doing something like Return of the Dark Knight? You're going to the graphic novel and you're going to do that. You're going to do it to Zack Snyder, let's say. Oh, he's going to do the worth. That's Elseworld. Yeah, and let's be let's be let's be frank about what Elseworlds is today. You're talking about there was a high bar and you had two very accomplished filmmakers who had delivered massive hits for the studio. That's really what we're saying. Matt Reeves and Todd Phillips had the clout with the studio to say, leave us alone. And because they had made the studio boatloads of money, everyone respected that. Yeah. You think if Joker was a, a box office failure or the Batman had been critically reviled that we're having the conversation about them as Elseworlds sequels? No yeah. chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. uh, And uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on!